everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, my name is Nora. If this is your first time, welcome. If you are returning from my just one first video, I guess, thank you for coming back because uh, you're keeping this going and making me feel like I, I have a purpose to keep on talking and sharing with you guys. But today we are in a different setting that I'm so pumped and so excited about. And I just want to tell you guys, this is my nephew, Jay. Say hi, everybody. No, say louder. Say hi, everyone. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so if, if for whatever reason you see a, a little guy kind of plowing through, this is his mom here. Uh, but my nephew is probably going to be plowing through and making his... You want some juice? Okay. So as some of you, I'm probably, um, you know, assuming are watching this and are just saying, you know, obviously with everything going on, COVID-19, you know, six feet distance, stay far apart. We live together. We are family and we're, you know, we're very close and we're always together. So we are safe. We're making sure we're safe. Um, I know you hear a lot of noise in the background, but there are four and a half humans here, as you saw earlier. <laughs> My nephew, her son is here. So we're perfectly fine. We're safe. But... I wanted to sit here with my girls, uh, two best friends that just, I think really exemplify what it means to be just strong women in today's age, doing what they have to do moving forward. And I wanted to bring them in today just for some candid conversation. Um, unfortunately, yes, we are drinking again today because we like to drink, <laughs> but honestly, I know my last video we were drinking. We are gonna drink on this channel. So I love y'all dearly. I'm gonna hide the, the label because we ain't got no sponsorships just yet. Holla at me. Okay, but info is in the bio down below. But we don't want to get in trouble. But at the end of the day, guys, we drink. We like to enjoy ourselves. We're being responsible. We're being safe. But I will start it off with ladies. Introduce yourselves if you want to start us off. My name is Kelsey. I don't have a YouTube yet, so. Um, yes, we are manifesting out here. Yes. Anything special you want to kind of tell the people? Anything you feel like they should know? Her so both of their socials will be in the bottom bar down below. So obviously you're going to find that. But if there is well, anything I'm, else. I'm just super excited for Nora to start her channel. I've been telling her start it, start it, start it because then obviously I'm gonna get some ideas and I'm gonna follow her back. I love it. I love it. And please. I'm Brooke. Um, I'm gonna do. I'm 23. Yes. <laughs> and I work at the hospital nearby doing security. Yes. And she, um, you know, is definitely one of our essential workers, one of our soldiers who steps forward and goes to work every single day, who doesn't have the luxury to stay home and not have to worry about being around everybody else. So. Brooke, we love you and we always thank you for making sure our community and everyone is safe. Um, and on that note, we are going to jump right in. And today, I wanted to kind of talk about millennials because, uh, I mean, the three of us are all millennials. You guys can sometimes kind of teeter-totter between, you know, generations. But we just going to say for this video, they're millennials. Okay. Thank you so much. Millennials, moving forward. Thank you. Bye. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you. So, millennials. And I think, unfortunately, a lot of times we have a stigma that comes with us where everyone just assumes millennials are lazy or we feel entitled and we're not ready to work and do what we need to do for anything we get in life. And I thought it would be interesting to have these two beautiful women on here today because not only are they millennials, they are both moms, they are both single mothers, they are both mothers who are providing for their children and moving forward and are breaking boundaries and breaking these these stereotypes. You know, you've, you've got Kelsey here who works a full-time job and goes to school full-time pursuing a, a bachelor's degree and you've got Brooke here who as well is pursuing um, a different type of education, working towards the police academy, and then also is working as an essential worker and being there for our community. And then myself, you know, who works in corporate America, 50 to 60 hours a week. Um, I'm, I'm not a mom, not yet, you know, God willing, but all three of us are representations and women in society right now as millennials that are showing, no, we're not lazy. Yes, we might have standards, there are things we want, but we are working our asses off to achieve that. So not really an agenda today. I kind of just wanted again to have a moment to sit here and have a little beverage with my girls and just kind of openly talk. So 
either one of you, if it's Kelsey or Brooke, you know, obviously as single moms, do you guys ever feel like there is a stigma that comes to you guys as being single moms who are young specifically? I don't want to just say single moms, but younger single moms and that people automatically look at you and think so. If either one of you kind of want to take Um Well, take absolutely. Mm -hmm. So starting off just by saying you're a single mom, I feel like the next question people are like, well, how old, how old are you? Like, that's I feel like that's what people sometimes some people don't ask and you can see the question formulated in their head and then other people are like oh you're so young like stuff like that and it's just like okay like what do you want me to do I'm still doing what I'm supposed to do with a child so either way if I didn't have a child I feel like I'll be in the same exact exact position I am right now with going to school and working as well so and having your own apartment right. and having that independence yeah I agree and kind of like how she was saying where, you know, people will ask you that question and you can kind of see they're alluding to things, like two things. Mm -hmm. Do you ever feel like you can kind of see it on people's faces? Like they're kind of just already oh, assuming yes. what the answer is? Yes. So like at my job specifically, so like, okay, I have a sleeve, I have lots of tattoos. So in general, people judge me off that. Mm -hmm. So then like, for example, a doc I was with a doctor in a situation and um, we were talking, it was with a child and he didn't know that I had a child and I just I said like I feel bad for the mom because I can feel her pain because if that was happening to my son you know so so and he was like you have a child I said yeah he said how old are you I said okay. I'm 23 but that doesn't matter yeah. right <laughs> it doesn't matter because I'm still working a full-time job still doing everything that it's I like need to we shouldn't to. even have to say any of that it's just like oh yeah well, like how is your child that should mm -hmm. be the next question yeah right how old is your child like something more you know not how old are you anymore? Right. Right, right, right. right. Not, not so forward. Right. right. Very The judged. people you, like, don't even know. Like, I know. Literally, like... And yeah. what I always found interesting, because, I mean, again, I can't speak for you guys. I don't have kids. But I'm always just like, okay, I feel like that's a little un uncomfortable um, to ask people that. It's a little bit forward of a question to ask. But also, if it was me, I would kind of look back and be like, well, how old are you? Right. Well, you want to ask me that question. Well, right. do you have children? I think you're... it's uncomfortable when people are right. like what happened with you and their dad yeah it's none of your business what happened between me right. and his dad absolutely and none of I, your business and it makes me further wonder if the whole fact of them looking at and, and i'm gonna say us just in loose terms but mm -hmm. us as peers and millennials i wonder if it's because they look at us and they assume oh you're a millennial you must have been irresponsible what's the situation with the dad right yeah. because if they looked at us and Obviously, it's kind of hard to tell people's ages, but if someone looked at you and automatically thought, oh, this person looks, just to throw an age out there, not to say that it's old, but 45, would they have asked you that question? So right. it's like, would you have asked me what I what I do? Would you have asked me where the father was? But no, you're asking because you look at my age and you assume I fit within this group and this demographic so, yeah. that I'm not responsible yeah. at this time as well. Um, how do you guys kind of feel about the statement where they say, um, and, and again, when I'm saying they, guys, I'm just saying very loosely, just yeah. they, people, mm -hmm. anybody, if that fits you, <laughs> well, you are they. Lace they, it up. okay, let's it up, put the shoe on, stop. <laughs> but... You know when sometimes people will just say millennials are lazy or very entitled. Obviously, again, the three of us have come from similar in some senses, and obviously we don't have to get into that, but similar in some senses, but different at the same time backgrounds. How does that sometimes, I guess, kind of make you feel in Brooke? We can kind of start with you. Just when you hear people say, like, oh, you're lazy and you kind of walk around entitled because you're a millennial. So I always, I actually do get defensive when people say that sometimes, and it just happens, and I know I need to work on how I react to it. But like, from what happened to me when I was younger, has defined me as a person, like how I am now, because I work for everything that I have now. So when people just think that I'm entitled because I'm a millennial, it like, angers me. <laughs> right. It angers me, because I work my ass off 40 plus hours a week, working like between like and then coming home and working as a full-time mom like same as kelsey like it doesn't stop so like nothing is given to us we're not entitled we work hard for our money like specifically me kelsey and you because you know i know us three but um <laughs> sure you all do too but, <laughs> but like it just i wish people would think more about not just like our appearances just 
Yeah. No, but you're saying it well. Yeah. You know, it's just yeah. tough when you know what you go through day in and day out. Right. And they and, have no idea because right. they just see like, for example, like I'm professional at work. I have to be professional at work. So they see a professional put together woman. They think that I must, you know, have X, Y, Z. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. They think you have it all together. They think, I, yeah, they think I do. And every day I work on myself. So like, they're not wrong. Like I do have it together at work, but like at home, my everyday life, mental health, right. like all that stuff, I still work on that every day. Right. So, which is beautiful. Yeah. Kelsey, how do you yeah. Feel? So for me, I would say like when um, someone would say millennials are lazy or whatever, I think that they are talking about maybe their child or maybe someone in their family member or just people that they see maybe in the media. Um, and so when they say that. I've never had anybody say that to me, but obviously I've seen it on the media, heard it, um, stuff like that. So I, that's what I can assume that they're just saying that because of like the college, like that rap type of stuff. And the lifestyle they see. Right, but for me, I've never had no one say that to me. And I think because what you said, because we handle ourselves very professionally, um, that no one would think that we fall into that category. Right. That also angers some people too, that yeah. we can per handle ourselves right. professionally. Mm -hmm. Like a lot specifically from my job, for example, a woman came in recently and um, not to get too vulgar, but you know, my job has no a lot, names. right, no names, not that, but like she came in and she immediately came at like my whole yeah. demeanor yeah. because of how I was so professional when she was being like belligerent. Right. So like she came at my whole being because I was professional was like, and didn't crack under her yeah, like yeah. pressure of, you know, craziness or whatever. And all the nonsense. Right. Right. Nonsense. And and I mean Kelsey, you bring up I mean you said something that I thought was great as well too that you mentioned is a lot of times people will kind of try to project these stereotypes onto you because of what they see and I think they're further just projecting what they see whether it's in their homes, their relationships with their own kids, family members, cousins, nieces, nephews, whatever it may be and I think people just assume that they see one bad apple and they kind of group everyone all together and just assume at that point well if I saw one millennial acting as such Every single one across right. the board. And they're shocked. Shock. They're very shocked. And they're, they're so not. shocked right. when you don't. And then what I think is also very interesting too, and I mean, I don't have the statistics. I know, Kelsey, you had it. And if you can just pull it up real quick just to get the age. But I think sometimes people also forget how how wide the millennial demographic is. So again, not to Wikipedia, Google, if it's on the internet, if it's on the internet, it's true, right? Honestly, at this point. But Nevertheless, I mean, if you're looking and you've got Gen X, Gen X traditionally they say between 1965 and 1979, you've got millennials, they're going to tell you 1980 to 1994. So, I mean, if you're thinking of someone already, I mean, I'm 28 years old turning 29 and I was born in 1991. I'm towards the, the latter part of millennials and if they're saying the millennial group starts in 1980, I think it's kind of unfair to assume when you put one whole group together to say millennials as a whole act as such. Because you are talking about people that might be 10, 11 years my senior and 15, 16 years their senior, which again, I'm just like, how, how do you kind of group one whole demographic of people together in one major okay. thing and you run with the stereotypes no. and just assume people yeah. are that. So I, I, I don't know. I, it's always something that, as they mentioned, you know, it's something we, it's interesting. We come across it all the time. I love hearing people say how lazy millennials are and how entitled we are. And to be honest with you, yeah, we are entitled because I think we did grow up in a generation where we came from parents that maybe grew up without technology and really did yeah. have to grind yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, some of us in the millennial gap, as we saw starting in 1980, also didn't have much with technology as well. Some of us didn't have access to a lot of other things. So there's a lot of people within this same demographic that I think are also proving that they didn't have those same luxuries, I guess you could say for lack of better words, to move forward. And I think it's it's actually a beautiful demographic and culture to look at to see what millennials have been able to do, how we've been able to push forward. Uh, do I think sometimes, yes, we can be a little bit on the more uh, feeling like we deserve everything and high maintenance, whatever, yes. But I think it's because we've seen what we can achieve, we've seen what we've been able to build up and we're gonna fight for it. Um, and we earned it. And we've earned it. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. And we've earned it. And that was actually something I wanted to ask both of you again, you know, kind of diving in. I know Kelsey and I both work a little bit more on in our corporate life, um, on the HR recruiter standpoint and, and kind of looking on that that piece there. Um, but I also want to get your, your standpoint as well. But just kind of what do you think as being someone who works in HR, an HR yeah. professional who works in talent acquisition and obviously seeing how much people talk about millennials what have you grasped through whether it's interview process and just hiring and onboarding at your company and seeing the differences so with my company obviously i'm biased um just because that's the company i've been with for so long um definitely as a millennial they expect you to start off at a certain level even at a certain pay and like i have you know we have friends that are like avp recruiters they're like no they're just trying to target you at this price range because you're however old, but you should not be there. Right. If you have the skill set, then you have the skill set. So I feel as a millennial, um, you have to work twice as hard because your age is so important to them once you're coming in because your age defines your experience mm. um, and your skill set automatically. Like this is a 21 year old. They have no experience and they don't know if you if you've internship for five years prior so um i think for me that's the biggest thing like, you have to work really hard to be like at their level right and there's people at um, my job that they started like i don't I, i'm trying to like not put so many like, <laughs> like words into it like a, a thing um so there's people that haven't even went to college, but because they've been there so long, like tenure, that automatically you're gonna get this position for someone that just graduated with a bachelor's. Because experience. Because, yeah, exactly. So. No, I mean, you brought up great points. And again, I want to just kind of know from your perspective. And I mean, Brooke, what have you seen, obviously working more in, you know, public service, obviously working towards everything, being in the, you know, working towards the police academy. Have you kind of experienced that difference in ageism, I guess you can call it. And I know that's so, uh, such a broad term, but have you kind of noticed things on your end? Um, Age-wise, I can say like from like a, when I see nursing perspective per se, um, the older nurses, I don't know how to word this, and that's like, you know what I mean? they're very like stuck up and like they are set in their ways and that's what I would call entitled because they think because they've been nursing for so long that they don't need to like, they don't need to learn the new things, they don't need to like still respect every person that walks in there and treat them like a human being. Because I find that like the older nurses don't respect a lot of the clients that come in. Right. And right. it's really And bothersome. again, this is not to speak for everyone. And I already right. know with even me saying this disclaimer, there's gonna be one of y'all in the comments saying, Oh my god, I can't believe you're talking about all these nurses like that. <laughs> no, it's not what she's saying. She's obviously only them. speaking from her experience. We respect the profession through right. and through, but we're just speaking from millennial standpoint. The way, the same way other people will talk about all millennials, all she is saying through her experience. Granted, I know, yes, we haven't been on earth for so long. Ha ha ha. All she knows through her experience is that you realize sometimes our more senior and more experienced professionals will sometimes act this way towards younger professionals because of such. Like the younger nurses have so much more respect for everybody that comes in compared to the older nurses who maybe are tired of it or like just have you know have had enough in their career i'm not really sure but i do see that the older nurses do have more entitlement in their job right right and who knows and maybe it's just one of those things of it's like i feel like i've, I've been here longer i've been doing this longer so not I even know just nurses right. too like like the older like security people like they feel like they're entitled but like yeah. you're still learning something every single day right i walk into work and i don't know what's going to happen every single day it's a different thing every day we're serving a like seven eight cities like there's a lot of people i learn something new each day right. i learn how to deal with new people each day i think everybody should still have that mindset but unfortunately the older people are just set in their ways right so they're not like down to learn they're not down to like listen to people and just like you know be like a decent human being right you know what I mean? honestly no of course. from what i've seen and open to it yeah, yeah.
and open to having that conversation. Yeah. And you know, in, in you know, maybe we create these platforms where we can just sit here on our end and we word vomit and we talk and we drink a little bit and we just chat and talk about what we want to talk about and maybe that helps, you know, the next person understand. Maybe we're that millennial who doesn't seem to understand what's happening and is super entitled is coming from. And maybe on the other end, maybe there's someone a little bit more senior than a different generation of us who can express to us, well, this is what I've come across, this is what I've seen, and this is what has caused me to kind of feel this way. But, um, you know, we just wanted to get on here and at least share some time with you guys and chat a little bit. And um, I know we didn't want to hold you guys super, super long. I know with everything going on right now in our society, in our world, it's super serious. Uh, COVID-19 has definitely been, you know, rampaging through our, our communities and it's definitely been a tough time. But uh, we were hoping just to kind of give you guys some nonsense conversation, some frivolous talk. Three girlfriends just sitting on a couch and talking. My nephew, her son, in the background not shutting up but you know living his best life but at least it just gave you guys a little bit of entertainment you know hopefully for 15 20 minutes just to kind of watch and and start a conversation you know chat with your families chat with your kids chat with your parents and just kind of see what they think and what they think about different generations and and kind of what we're doing but um and i would say leave any comments that you have below yes and maybe we could do a part two absolutely um, guys here jay since you're yelling so much, do you want to come say bye to, to everybody and tell them to come hang out? Come. No. Say come subscribe. With say no. subscribe. Well, come hang out. No, no, no. 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 All right. Well, just Sorry. kidding. He doesn't want to just do it, guys. Kidding. So, um, no. but at the end of the day, and absolutely, <laughs> on that note, thank you guys so much for uh, sitting you. here and joining us today. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Double tap the notification bell if you want, because honestly, I get it. I don't have the notifications on a lot of stuff. I don't really care to have notifications on a lot of things on my phone, so I'm not gonna lie. If you want notifications, double tap. If you don't understand, keep the same energy. Cool. But like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you guys next time on my channel. Bye.